Hey guys, welcome back to another review here at Security Vultures, where security is our culture. Today, we'll be talking about private internet access, or better known as PIA. Private internet access is a long-standing veteran in the VPN industry, but a lot has changed in the past few years. In this private internet access review, we set out to see how this VPN stacks out against the competition. To do this, we purchased a subscription, researched the company, and thoroughly tested the VPN to see how fast our PIA servers in various locations around the US and Europe, how well do the VPN applications work, does this VPN have any data leaks or security problems, does it work well with Netflix and other streaming services. So without any further ado, Let's hop on in to this review with an overview of our findings before getting in to the nitty gritty of private internet access. Let's talk about the pros and cons of PIA first. So to start with the pros, we have a user-friendly and secure VPN apps, extra privacy and security features, tested and proven no logs VPN provider, and finally low prices. Now on to the cons. We have slow and inconsistent speeds based in the US, which is a bad privacy jurisdiction, does not work well for Netflix and streaming. Now part of a VPN conglomerate, Cape Technologies. And we also have some additional research findings to point out. PIA customer support tests, convicted cryptocurrency criminal hired as the CTO of PIA and does PIA work well for torrenting? Private internet access offers a nice selection of VPN apps for desktop and mobile operating systems. Additionally, PIA also has browser extensions for Chrome, Firefox and Opera browsers. Now below, you can see all of the PIA VPN apps. We must note, most of the leading VPNs today support more than just desktop and mobile operating systems. PIA does not fall into this category. For comparison's sake, Surfshark and NordVPN, both of these VPNs support gaming systems, smart TVs, fire sticks, routers, and all the major desktops and mobile operating systems. For this PIA review, I also thoroughly tested out the Windows VPN client. Overall, the Windows client feels polished and is also user friendly. I also like the dark mode design. Below, you can see the PIA Windows client, which expands or collapses to reveal more settings and options. Here is the collapsed version displaying basic connection info. The app hovers above the tray in the bottom right-hand corner of the desktop. In addition to all features that we have covered above, the PIA desktop client also has light and dark modes, settings to open VPN client on system startup, connect on launch settings to a specified VPN server, different language settings, customizable DNS options, and port forwarding. Now, overall, the PIA desktop clients work well. It may be a decent choice if you want a user-friendly VPN for PC. Most people using VPNs today need a service that is secure and free of data leaks. And while data leaks are common with free VPN apps, this is not something we should expect with a premium paid service that promises security. So to test this, I ran both the Windows and Mac OS clients through some basic VPN tests and checks to identify leaks or broken features. Here I'm testing the PIA Windows VPN client for leaks while connected to a server in Sweden. You can see that there were no leaks to be found with my real IPv6 address being blocked out. Note that PIA does not support IPv6. I also tested the PIA Mac OS client and found it to be 
secure and without leaks, although I'm not sure I would consider PIA to be one of the best VPNs for Mac. It may still be a decent choice for Mac users. PIA also implements a good kill switch with their VPN apps, which will block traffic if the VPN connection drops for any reason. This ensures all traffic remains encrypted and protected by the VPN tunnel. The PIA kill switch has three levels, off, in which does not block any traffic, auto, blocks outside traffic when the VPN is on, and lastly, always, which also blocks all traffic when the VPN is off. In testing out the kill switch with various interruptions, everything appeared to work, to work well. Despite being a basic VPN service, private internet access still offers some good privacy and security features. In addition to the multi-level kill switch we discussed above, PIA also provides various data encryption options, including WireGuard, a VPN ad blocking feature called PIA Mace. First, the WireGuard protocol is an excellent feature that usually offers big advantages with performance. However, in our tests for this PIA review, WireGuard speeds were not very good. We'll examine slow speeds later in this review. Nonetheless, the WireGuard VPN protocol does still offer some advantages, including upgraded security and more reliability on mobile devices. Below, you can see the encryption options in the PIA Windows app. Another good feature offered by PIA is the ad blocker, which they call PIA Mace. PIA Mace blocks domains for advertisements, trackers, and malware. Unlike some of the other ad blocker options, PIA Mace does not have the ability to whitelist certain domains or adjust the filter settings. It is simply on or off. While some ad blocker is better than no ad blocker, I would not recommend using PIA Mace as your primary ad blocker. When I tested different VPN ad blockers, I found that PIA's ad blocker did not block as many domains as other options. However, in terms of VPN ad blockers, NordVPN and Surfshark performed better than PIA, while CyberGhost performed the worst. We will make more comparison videos later on, so be sure to stay tuned for that, guys. Overall, PIA does well in terms of security and privacy features, even if the ad blocker is not very robust. Now that we've covered some of the pros of PIA, let's take a look at the cons. PIA has slow and inconsistent speeds. One of the biggest drawbacks we noted in this review was the performance. This was somewhat surprising, however, since most VPNs that support WireGuard have excellent performance. Though with PIA, I ran numerous tests on a 500 Mbps internet connection, which is baseline speed from the testing lab in the United States. Now, in order to give PIA the best performance test possible, I selected a WireGuard VPN protocol and ran speed tests with the latest version of the PIA Windows client. Now, let's examine the results. Here was a PIA server in Seattle at 41 Mbps. This is really bad. Getting only 41 Mbps on a 500 Mbps connection is definitely slower than average. So let's examine some of the other locations. Here was a PIA server in Los Angeles, California at 85 Mbps. While granted, this is better than the previous test results, it really is still quite slow. We should be getting speeds over 200 Mbps, especially with WireGuard protocol. Next, I tested a PIA server in New York, which gave me about 23 Mbps. With the PIA servers in the United States, it is clear that this is a slow VPN. Now, for the final speed test, I decided to try a location across the pond in the United Kingdom. Here was a PIA server located in London, UK, and we came in at 10 Mbps. With slow speeds like this, PIA is terrible. 
if you value performance. While PIA does well in some areas of privacy, one major drawback is the jurisdiction. PIA is based in the United States, which is a member of the 5 Eye Surveillance Alliance. And aside from the surveillance concerns, there are also legal drawbacks to operating a VPN in the US. The biggest issue is that the US government can legally force businesses to log customer data and provide this to the authorities. Additionally, authorities can also use gag orders, thereby prohibiting the business from alerting its customers to privacy violations. See the national security letters. There are previous examples of this happening, such as with IP Vanish being forced to log user data, despite being a no logs VPN. Another example was LavaBit being coerced to hand over encryption keys. How important is jurisdiction? Now, ultimately the answer is that it depends on your unique needs and threat model, which you should consider using the best VPN for your needs. Many people disagree about the importance of jurisdiction and the answer is not entirely clear because we cannot see what's going on behind the scenes. As a business operating in the United States, PIA is still obligated to comply with all US laws, regulations, and court orders, or face shutdown like LavaBit in 2013. Private internet access does not work well for streaming. Private internet access has never done well for streaming in my tests. For example, Netflix has always been a hit or miss. I've tested US servers with PIA to access Netflix and I was blocked out. PIA may get through some servers, but it did not work with the ones I tried. But things are constantly in the flux when it comes to Netflix and VPNs. So you might want to test this yourself. It's also important to note that Netflix VPN issue is always a cat and mouse game that continues to evolve. Even though I could not access Netflix with private internet access, there may be a few servers in the network that are getting through, but me personally, I gave up. Two of the best VPNs for Netflix are currently NordVPN and Surfshark, which you can check out in our previous videos. I also tested out BBC iPlayer, which is a popular streaming service for UK content. And once again, however, PIA was not able to get through being blocked out. Below, you can see I'm using a PIA server in London, but BBC iPlayer is still not accessible. Now note that many people also use VPNs on streaming devices. One such example of this is using a VPN for an Amazon Fire Stick. Unfortunately, PIA does not offer a dedicated Fire Stick app at this time. If they do, we will keep you posted in the future. Now, another huge con about using private internet access is the fact that their company was purchased by none other than Cape Technologies. We will soon make a follow-up video uh, dedicated to the issues of Cape purchasing VPNs, but here are the main highlights. Cape purchased private internet access in November of 2019. Cape was formerly named Crossrider and was often associated with malware. In 2017, Crossrider purchased CyberGhost VPN and then later Zenmate. Crossrider changed its name to Cape due to controversial past activities Fast forward to 2021, Cape purchased ExpressVPN for about $1 billion. As we have noted before, trust is a major factor when choosing privacy tools. After all, a VPN has the potential to record everything you do online when you decide to use it to encrypt traffic. Ultimately, we also learned that Crossrider created a development platform that third parties use to infect devices with malware. However, Crossrider itself was not the owner or creator of that malware. Due to abuse carried out by third parties, Crossrider shut down its platform in 2016 and pivoted to the security VPN and securing industry today. Cape is a major player 
in the VPN industry, owning four VPN services and a collection of VPN review websites. That's another huge issue entirely because a lot of these top review sites that you see when you Google VPN reviews are mostly just shilling for VPN providers and not giving you their honest opinion. They only care about their juicy affiliate commissions. Now, let's take a quick look at some additional findings from my research for this PIA review. Yet again, this is another huge con. For reasons that are not entirely clear, some of the higher ups at Private Internet Access decided to hire Mark Carpelli's as the CTO or Chief Technology Officer in April of 2018. To understand why this was upsetting to many PIA users, we'll just take a quick look at Mark Carpelli's. Mark Carpelli's was running Mt. Gox in 2014 when it suddenly collapsed, with millions of dollars in Bitcoin disappearing. Carpelli's was subsequently arrested in Japan and charged with fraud and embezzlement. As to where all the Bitcoins that were stored at Mount Gox ended up, nobody seems to know. 650,000 Bitcoins remain unaccounted for as a result of the Mount Gox hack. A number of online theories have been developed as to where the missing coins are. Some have suggested that Mount Gox never had the amount of coins that it claimed and that Carpelli's had manipulated the numbers to make it appear that Mt. Gox held more Bitcoin than in fact it really had. In March 2019, Carpelli's was found guilty of tampering with financial records in a Japanese court due to the controversy that erupted in various forums after Carpelli's joined PIA. Andrew Lee, who is the co-founder of PIA, wrote a blog post where he explained his reasoning. The post discusses mistakes, forgiveness, and human progress. But that may not be enough for PIA users who trust the company with securing their private data. And guys, in our honest opinion, this raises major red flags all over the place. Again, it's totally ridiculous that they hire a convicted cryptocurrency criminal as the CTO. Does PIA work well for torrenting? When selecting the best VPN for torrenting, there are a few things you want to look for. Fast speeds, secure apps, good leak protection settings. While PIA offers secure apps with a kill switch, the speeds were not good in my tests. This means that torrenting will most likely be slow. However, on a positive note, PIA does have port forwarding, which is useful with torrenting, but the slow speeds are still a big drawback. Another drawback for torrenting, once again, is in the U.S. jurisdiction. The U.S. has very strict copyright violation laws, DMCA, and many large media companies that go after people for a copyright infringement. Using a VPN in an offshore jurisdiction may be safer, as they would not need to comply with DMCA issues. Private Internet Access offers email, ticket support, and chat. Unfortunately, I was not able to reach live chat support when I tried for this review. However, here was the message I received when attempting to connect with a support technician at PIA. The chat ended, but nobody ever got back to me. This is a case of bad customer support. In my opinion, most of the leading VPNs offer 24-7 live chat support with professional and responsive staff. This does not seem to be the case with PIA at this time anyway. Now guys, let's take a quick look at the pricing options. Low prices for PIA subscriptions. Private internet access has previously been among the best cheap VPNs on the market with very affordable prices. Right now, there are three basic pricing tiers. At under $3 a month, with the three-year plan, PIA is very affordable. They currently do not offer any free trials, unfortunately. However, they do offer a 30-day refund. Reading through the terms of service, I did find a few exceptions to the 30-day refund window. 
At the time of this PIA review, they currently offer three different payment methods, such as credit cards, PayPal cryptocurrencies, and for select countries, also Amazon Pay. Now that we have reached the conclusion of this review, overall, PIA may be cheap, but it still does not offer much value. On a positive note, it does have good VPN apps that are secure and user-friendly. But with that in mind, these drawbacks still stand out. Slow and inconsistent speeds based in the United States does not work well with streaming devices. Now part of a large VPN conglomerate, T Cape Technologies, mediocre support that may or may not be available. So, in short, we are not recommending this VPN. There are far too many other great alternatives to consider. Guys, thanks for tuning in to this review and stay safe and we'll see you in the next one.